Hey chaps, how you all doing today? It's John with you again. Having a bad hair day today, having a bad hair day, having a bad sort of need a shave and everything else. I mean I'm in bits, I'm in bits. But anyway, apart from all that rubbish, um we're having an update. An update on the um M forty eight A three pattern. And where I've got to at the point at this point in time. Okay, construction's all finished, we did that in the last uh, two videos. So in this one now we're going to start painting it getting it all ready for painting and everything else. So I've done a base, we've got the base painting done, shall we say, well, well not base painting done, uh, I don't know what you call it. I've the tracks got their base colour on and I've got the tank in black because I'm going to do a sort of appreciating technique that I'm going to show you. So um, we'll just change the angle, we'll go down, we'll look at the bench and um, we'll show you what we're going to do next, shall we? We might as well. Right, here's our. Uh, we have the um, the main body of the tank done. We've it painted black. We have that uh, second little turret here. That's all painted black. And we've got our wheels done. And they're all painted black. Now, what I used for that was the XF1 flat black. And what I used for the wheels. Because there's just, if you notice, there's just the slightest little difference in them. It's more of a grey black than these ones. And what that is, that's the uh, rubber black. Okay, rubber black on the um, on the wheels and things like that. Two seconds. Of black. I have behind me here. Yeah. F1, which we used for the the wheel, the, the the main body of the tank. And where are you? There we go. XF85. See that XF85 rubber black, and it's just it's just a lighter black because the, the edges of the wheels are going to be done in black, and the uh, inserts are going to be in the green, right? So now we've got it's it, it, it's uh, it's undercoat, and I use a black undercoat because I do a sort of a pre-shading technique, which I learned from uh, Andy's Hobby Headquarters. He started doing it. I started copying him. And it works, it works, it really works and I like it, I like it, I do like it a lot. Some people do different different ways, do it white and then put in the things. I like doing it this way. Okay, so what we need for this is we use, I use this, which is XF2 flat white. So I'll just pop off the uh, the turret. We'll work on the, on the body first. I'll do a little bit and as usual I'll pause and we'll show you what I've done for a finish rather than you watching me spending 20 minutes putting in little bits and pieces there's no need for that once I show you say we'll do this front section once that's done and I show you the, the result of the finish you get the idea there's no need to watch me doing all the little uh, fiddly work okay so we start off right we turn on our compressor which is handy we get our XF2 flat white give it an old shake Okay, and I've got my little homemade stand there for my airbrush. We don't want them now at the moment, and we don't want them, we just brush them aside, they're out of our way. Right? Now, I'm forgetting one little thing. I use this old mat under everything so I don't uh, go destroying my reasonably new mat and then have to go off and buy another mat because it's all covered in paint. This is the one that gets covered in paint. So it's just it's a handy thing for if you have an old mat there just to keep the uh, your, your your working mat nice and clean. Alright we'll plop some paint into this a little bit of white paint in there da, 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 da. No. This is a, it's on a table, so a little table, and it wobbles like hell. So I just reduce the air pressure on that, because we don't want this as a strong, we don't want it blasting out. Right, so I'm, I, uh, I was happy with that until I decided to plop the airbrush and spill a little blob of white paint freaking everywhere. 
that's John trying to rush. But anyway, enough about that. Look, I got paint on my hands and everything. So once you put the paint in the br in the interior brush, remember, take it easy. <laughs> so anyway, what we do is we pick out all the little panels. Now if you see in here, there's sort of four panels. There's the one there. So we get a little bit of. Now I find that the XF white from Tamiya very spitty. It doesn't happen with any other paint except for this one, the XF white. And a couple of other people have had the same kind of problem with it. Right, there's the paint. It's just it's it's just so much lighter. No, I don't know. But you can see from that there what we're what we're kind of what we're kind of up to. Kind of a bigish kind of here. We kind of outline. I outline the panel. And then Too worried about it, 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 it being a bit spitty because the whole thing is going to be covered over for a finish. Which, which, are, which are final colour, shall we say? So you can get the idea from that there what I'm trying to do, okay? You can get the little panels. So I'll just tidy up this one and and I'll do the rest of them and we'll come back and we'll have a look at that then and then we'll discuss what we'll do after that. Right, so now we have our pre-shading done and this is what we want to get. We want to get the sort of the darker and lighter areas. That's all it is and you're just sort of highlighting panels that you want lighter and don't put on the panels you want darker. It'll make more sense um, you know, when we start putting down the uh, the base colour, and for the base colour for this, I'll be using NATO green, even though the colour call out calls for uh, olive drab. I find olive drab a bit too dark, especially when we're going to go add and washes and this, that, and the other. And we're going to be darkening it all up. So um, the NATO green just works much better for me. My own personal uh, preference is the NATO green on this one. So that's the uh, that's the. The, the, the whole of the body of the tank you know, and here is the turret okay and if you notice I just did it kind of a just down the top of the barrel not the bottom okay and only the areas that you want to be lighter remember it's just a pre-shading it doesn't really matter how neat or tidy it is because it doesn't really matter at all because it's uh, it, it's how the paint um, in reality would uh, you, you know lighten from the effects of the sun from people walking over it scrubbing off paint and lightening it off here and there and things like that so and there's our uh, secondary little turret there the uh, little commander's copula turret all nicely done so that's the pre-shading done now I didn't do anything in the wheels I left the wheels as they are because I want them nice and black and darker. Anyway, not black, but I want them darker. And um, the figures, I have them painted and finished and all ready to go. What do you think of them, lads? Let me know. We'll give them a, a blast. Here we can probably see a little bit better there. If we. Oh, a second, I was thinking of this to see, can we get into here? Yeah, they're not the best of figures. They're not the best, I must admit. But uh, they're okay. They'll do the job. Um, I gave him the uh, Agrax Earth shade and a bit of dry brushing. I used buff to do a bit of a dry buffing, so it kind of looks like a bit dusty and things on him. So that's the uh, where we. we might, hopefully, it'll zoom in on him. Cause, uh, 
the Regrex works fabulous on the faces, you know. Oh, come on. Zoom in, you bloody. It doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't want to play ball with me today. It does not want to play ball with me today. Um, there we go. Now it decides to play ball. Okay, so as you can see, you know, the Agrax search it brings out a little definition in the faces, it brings out definition on the uniform and things. That's the uh, commander, and here we've got our driver. Okay, that's our driver figure, all ready to go. So they're finished, they're ready to go when the whole thing is, uh, is, is done. So they can be sort of put aside and uh, come back when you're ready for them guys so in the next clip now what I'm going to do is we're going to get the uh, the base color down like I said with the, um, the I'm using going to use the NATO green so click on to the next clip and we'll do the uh, we get the NATO green done right chaps now our shadow coating is done and it's dry okay that's had about an hour an hour and a half actually longer even because uh, I go off and do things life gets in the way as you know yourself so now it's dry and what are we going to do next next we're going to give it our overall coating right and what I'm going to do with this one is uh, NATO green XF 67 okay give it a bit of a shake we'll turn on our compressor and what you want to do with this and putting it on, don't blast it on and cover everything because you've just wasted all that pre-shading that you're going that you've just done, right? So what you want to do is you want to build it up and build it up slowly, okay? So you just want to cover it that it just about covers the white. If you know if you get catch my drift. And I'll show you here. We'll just put some uh, paint into the old airbrush. Do a bit of a test to make sure she's flowing nice and neatly. And slowly mist it on. Okay. And give it a great bring it up gradually. Okay. Get her green colour nice and gradually. Okay, nothing, not going too much in any one area. Letting it slowly build up. By letting it build up nice and slowly, what we're doing is we're showing all the work that needs to be done by doing our not showing all the work that needs to be done to ourselves. We're, we're, we're showing what all that work is done, if you know what I mean, by the uh, by the pre-shading. So you've got yes, it is all one colour, but it's sort of slightly darker in some areas, lighter in others. and slowly build it up nothing too dramatic in any one area we don't want to lose that lovely pre-shading work that we've done because you can, you can very very easily overdo it and it's like as if we've just wasted a pile of black and white paint now if you look at that there see You can kind of get the idea from the front there, what we're going for. Top. 
doesn't matter too much on the bottom where we didn't do any pre-shading we can get a nice good coating of the uh, our paint on that so I'll just finish off this okay can we get back and we'll show you what it's like when it's uh, when it's sort of pre-shaded now as you see from that even you can see the effects of the pre-shading where it's lighter here it's darker there but yet it still has the overall green and any areas that you need to go over lightly lightly do it so you don't lose that pre-shading effect okay this is the area where you do have to be a bit, a bit more careful because you want to cover up the white you don't want to see the white coming through but you don't want to see the black coming through either okay so you can get the idea from that there I'll continue on with the rest of this I'll get the turret done and the little turret done and I'll do the uh, the wheels well the drive sprockets and when I'm going to do the wheels at a later stage I'll show you how I do them okay so in the next clip I'll have it done bar the wheels minus the wheels because uh, that's a different step different process that I use for that but I'll have the main pre-shading covered in this and you can be able to see the effects of doing all that right now there's our pre-shading and coating done shall we say the effects of our pre-shading why we did it in the first place and as you can see from the uh oh, sorry, I'll move this I'll move the turret with the shooty thing as you can see from that, you can see it's got lighter areas and dark areas, but still all the same colour. And that's why the pre you do the pre-shading. Well, that's why I do it anyway, right? And like I said, for the bottom, it doesn't really matter too much because it's all going to be the one. Right, now we're on to the wheels. What do I use for the wheels? I use one of these things, right? And what it is, uh, it's a little template, it's a circle template, right? So, what I do is, I get my wheel, and I find out which one will do for the center of that now it appears to be just a little that there that one there fits in absolutely perfect and this is a kind of a messy job but you can always wash your hands afterwards can't you all right so as you see and simple as that make sure it's all done oops it is it and there you go there's our wheels done a little bit of touching in to do for a finish then but only just a small bit compared to having to paint the whole wheels so i go to do and i'll do all the rest of the wheels and we'll come back at the end of that now we're on to the last of our little ones quick blast that's all it takes there we go and there's all our little wheels done the little return roller he wheels at the top of that uh, all our wheel centers are done and as you see they will need just the barest little bit of a touch up for a finish but it's a lot easier than um, say paint the whole thing green and then going in and trying to paint the rubber on it's much easier to do it that way so we've got the base color down we've our wheels done and we've got our drive sprockets our drive sprockets there we go our drive sprockets are green our little uh, little secondary turret is done and a handy little item this you pick them up in any sort of pound shop or stationers stationery supply school supply store dead handy circle template so that's away for the next time so we'll just turn off the, uh, the, the compressor there and we'll just give it a last little recap of what we've done today what we did today was we got the um, we already had a the black base then we highlighted the areas we wanted lighter with the white and then we give it uh, our green color and by lightly putting on the green as we can see from that you've got your brighter areas and darker areas within that and that's the whole purpose of doing um, a pre-shading and that so 
what's left for me to do I've got to pick out all the uh, you know the detail painting like the uh, the jerry cans the spare tracks here on the side the front mantlet the cloth around that it gets a, a different color um, the storage that came with it then you can, came with some uh, the jerry cans it came with some duffel bags spare wheel uh, some ammo boxes and some storage then that I added myself I found a stretcher and a bag and that's it really so we got to pick out all the other little things then that have to be painted like all those little bits that I just said our tow rope has to be done the spare tracks and anything else that isn't in the uh, the bare green they've got to be done and picked out you got to paint all those do your lights everything else then and when that's done I'll come back to you I'll be probably on the next video so that'll be it for this video on the next video I'll come back and I'll have all the uh, the detail painting done and uh, we'll continue on from there so in the meantime lads thank you for subscribing if you've already subscribed to the channel if you haven't subscribed please do please do subscribe and stay tuned for more uh, more of the same shall we say so uh, I leave it at that um, don't forget, go and buy yourself a kit. Build it and enjoy it. As like I always say, it's a great hobby and it's there to be enjoyed. You don't have to spend a fortune. You can do it nice and cheap. So lads, I'll catch you in the next one. Stay safe. This is John, signing off.